Hello and welcome to Beyond Borders Briefing, where we bring you the latest news and insights on space and science. Today we have a very exciting story to share with you. So stay with us and let's get started. The unsolved mysteries of the moon, the moon, the natural satellite of our planet Earth, has fascinated humanity for centuries. But despite the Apollo missions that brought back lunar samples and data in the 1960s and 1970s, there are still many secrets and puzzles that the moon hides from us. In this video, we will explore some of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries of the moon, and how future missions could help us solve them. The origin of the moon One of the biggest questions about the moon is how it formed in the first place. The most widely accepted theory is that the moon was created by a giant impact between a Mars-sized object and the early Earth, about 4.5 billion years ago. This collision would have ejected a large amount of material into orbit, which eventually coalesced into the moon. However, this theory has some problems. For example, the chemical composition of the moon is very similar to that of the Earth, which is not expected if the moon was made mostly from the impactor. Also, the angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system is too high for such a scenario, unless some mechanism reduced it over time. Some alternative theories have been proposed such as that the moon was captured by the Earth's gravity from elsewhere in the solar system, or that the moon and the Earth formed together from a rotating disk of gas and dust. But none of these theories can explain all the observations and data we have so far. To solve this mystery, we need more information about the moon's interior structure, its isotopic ratios, and its ancient magnetic field. Future missions that could drill into the lunar crust, measure its gravity and magnetism, and collect more samples could help us test and refine our models of lunar origin. The water cycle of the moon Another surprising discovery about the moon was that it is not completely dry. In 2009, scientists found traces of water inside some of the lunar rocks brought back by Apollo 15. This suggested that water could have existed on the moon since its formation, or was delivered by comets and asteroids later on. Moreover, Recent orbital missions have detected signs of water ice on the surface of the moon, especially near its poles. This ice could be a valuable resource for future exploration, as it could be used for drinking water and rocket fuel. But how does water cycle on the moon? How does it get there, how does it move around, and how does it survive in such a harsh environment? We don't fully understand these questions yet. We know that water can be produced by chemical reactions between solar wind protons and oxygen atoms in lunar minerals. We also know that water can be lost by evaporation due to solar heating, or by photodissociation due to ultraviolet radiation. But we don't know how much water there is on the moon, how it is distributed, and how it changes over time. We also don't know if there are any subsurface reservoirs of liquid water or hydrothermal activity on the moon. To answer these questions, we need more measurements of the lunar surface temperature, reflectance, and spectroscopy. We also need more samples from different regions and depths of the moon. The dark side of the moon The dark side of the moon is not really dark, it is just the far side that we never see from Earth. This is because the moon is tidally locked to our planet, meaning that it rotates at the same rate as it orbits around us. As a result, we always see the same face of the moon. But what is on the other side? The first images of the far side were taken by Soviet spacecraft Luna 3 in 1959. They revealed a very different landscape than the near side. The far side has fewer dark plains called Maria, which are ancient lava flows. It also has more craters and mountains than the near side. Why is there such a contrast between the two sides? One possible explanation is that the near side was more volcanically active than the far side, due to tidal heating from the Earth or asymmetric distribution of radioactive elements. Another possible explanation is that a second moon collided with the far side long ago, creating a thicker crust that prevented magma from reaching the surface. To test these hypotheses, we need more data on the geology and geophysics of the far side. We also need to explore some of the unique features of the far side, such as the South Polakan Basin, the largest and oldest impact crater on the moon, and the Chang'e, for landing site, the first human-made object to touch down on the far side. That's all for today's news. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, 
and subscribe to our channel Beyond Borders Briefing for more updates on space and science. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.